Hi, I'm Brad Seibert of bradseibert.com, and today I'm going to show you how to test a React component using React Testing Library. Um, so we'll create a simple new React app. Uh, we'll use the Create React App tool to get started. So we'll call this, um, we'll just call this Testing Project, and we're going to use TypeScript for this. So if you run this Create React App Testing Project dash dash TypeScript, it will create a new uh, project called testing project and a folder on your file system for it um, to scaffold out your react application the dash dash typescript is used to specify to the build pipeline that we want to use typescript so it will come out of the box with typescript support which is awesome um, so it'll take a second for this to finish and then we will go ahead and cd into our directory in just a second there we go so we can cd into the new directory that we just created which is testing project and then we can I think I have code wired up I do not okay so I'm gonna open my editor um, and I will open our new project uh, and for me that's in projects um, and we called it testing library or uh, Oh, sorry, it's in testing project, it's not in projects. So we'll go ahead and open that. And we'll open the source folder, we'll find our app.tsx. And awesome enough, uh, the Create React app now gives us testing library out of the box, uh, which is great because if, if you don't have React testing library, you'll need to add it uh, it's like that. Uh, yarn add react testing library or npm install uh, react testing library so cool okay so this test is probably gonna work but let's go ahead and run yarn test to see if it does oh cool so it will um, give us a prompt we're gonna hit a to just go ahead and run all of our tests perfect uh, let's go ahead and make some changes so if we go into our app.tsx uh, I'm going to just remove everything that's not in this, uh, everything inside of this div. So if I save it, it's going to rerun the test because it's set in watch mode, and you'll notice that it fails. So watch mode will go through and watch for changes on the file system and then rerun any tests that have been associated with that. Um, it's failing because we had the words learn react right here on line 19. Um, we've since removed them, and then if we look at our test, we can see that it's searching for the words learn React. Okay, cool. So this is a really simple fix. Uh, right now we have nothing to test, so let's add something to test. So we're going to add um, a span, and then um, we'll say my name, oops, my name is, and then we'll say name. Um, we'll need to actually store this somewhere, so we'll use a react hook to store this. So we'll say const um, name set name equals react dot use state. And this is just giving us a stateful hook. Oops, sorry, not name. Make it an empty string. So if we were to rerun this, um, we can, you know what, I should probably pull up, let's close this really quick and just run yarn start. So this will open our React app in the browser, and we can take a look and see what it looks like. Any day now. Awesome, my name is blank. That makes sense because name is defaulted to an empty string. And we have this function we can call setName to set the name at any given time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a button, and we're gonna say set name to Brad. And you can change this to you know be your own name or whatever you'd like to do there. Um, so we're going to add an onClick listener to the button called set, uh, and that that onClick listener is going to fire set name with Brad. Uh, this is not going to work because it takes in a function. So this e is the event. Um, if we don't want to use the event, like we're not we're not using the event in this function body, the set name Brad, we can just turn those into an empty paren as well and that'll work fine. So we have this 
awesome uh, component. And it looks horrible, but um, we don't need it to look good to test it. So let's go ahead and uh, write some tests. So if we go back to our terminal and we use control C to kill the server, we can run yarn test again. Awesome. Okay, and it actually, it's really nice because uh, the React testing library will show you if it, if it doesn't have a match, like if it fails to match what you're looking for, it will show you what it has. So, okay, that works out really well. So we're gonna add a couple really, really basic tests. So um, it's worth mentioning that React testing library, this render method returns a bunch of functions that can be used. Um, and there's a, there's a really nice chart for all of them. Um, in fact, React testing library, let me pull that up really quick and we can just take a look at it. Uh, this is the one I want. Perfect. Um, so there is a cheat sheet down here. So these are all of the options. So there's get buys, find buys, query buys, get all buys, find all buys, and query all buys. And they tell you if there's no match, it'll throw an exception. If there's one match, it'll return. If there's more than one match, get by will also throw an exception. Okay, that's good to know. On the flip side of that, get all by will throw an exception if there's no match. It'll always return an array. If there's one or more matches, it will always return an array. And it's not asynchronous. This await means it's, uh, is it asynchronous or not? So if we wanted to, um, if, we, if we needed to load data from an endpoint, like an HTTP endpoint, for example, uh, we'd want to mock that in our test, but we'd also want to use one of the asynchronous selectors. So either find by or find all by. Um, thankfully, we don't have to worry about that with the simple test, but we might get into that in another video. So for now, we can take a look at our app.tsx. We have my name is, and then uh, this button. So I'm gonna just query for a couple different elements. So I'm gonna say span element, and this ensures that span element is in the document. So span, span element is going to say, uh, my name is, and this is a regular expression. Um, you can do string values or regular expressions, although regular exp expressions are generally more flexible. So I would recommend using those when you can. So we're going to query for the span element. We're going to query for the button element. And this is also, we can get this one by text as well, despite it being a button. So this one's going to say set name to Brad, I think is what we had it set as. Set name to Brad. Perfect. And then uh, we'll do a really simple test for now to ensure that both of these elements exist in the document. So now that we've done that, we can let our test run. Uh, it's been set to watch, so it's automatically running these every time I save the file in the background. And you'll notice that our one test has passed. That's awesome. Um, this doesn't really test anything other than the fact that our component can set itself up properly, and that's not very valuable. So we're gonna pull in fire event from React testing library. Now that we've expected that these elements are in the DOM, I'm going to say fire event. Uh, and I believe the logistics for this one are always a little confusing. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Um, yeah, so it's fire event dot click, there we go. And I just want to click the button element, which is perfect. Um, and then we're going to search for the span again, but we're going to search for the, oops, if I could type. Oh my gosh. So we'll call the span element too. You can uh, hopefully find a more descriptive name for your application. Um, but this should be, this should accurately reflect that my name is Brad is now in that span element and that's now a part of the DOM. So we can expect span element two to be in the DOM. Sorry, the document. Uh, I guess either, really. If we rerun this, okay, it doesn't work. Uh, let's see why. So it says, my name is Brad. Oh, uh, really simple fix. Uh, let me point it out before I actually fix it. So this is my name is colon Brad, 
and we're searching for my name is Brad. Um, so I just need to add a colon here, or remove the colon, oops, or remove the colon from apptsx. Uh, my name is Brad. What am I doing wrong? Oh, it looks like, uh, let me just rerun it again. It looks like it got in a weird spot where it ran it with uh, my name I colon Brad instead of my name is colon Brad. So um, that's one of the downsides of the watcher is it can kind of get caught up on itself if you're changing your test files or your source files really quickly. Uh, but you can see now that our test has passed and now we have a meaningful test. We check that it renders the my name is block. We check that it renders our button and then we click our button and ensure that our um, span element has updated the value to say my name is Brad. And that's it for this test. And hopefully this was informative and educational to help you learn how to use React Testing Library. I strongly recommend using it as it ships out of the box with Create React App now. Um, I know there are other alternatives out there like en Enzyme. I really prefer React Testing Library for uh, a multitude of reasons, mainly how simple it is. Um, and especially now that it ships out of the box with Create React App. So uh, yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Let me know your thoughts below. Thanks.